Good morning. This is uh, Dr. Jay Deepa, Assistant Professor, Department of Food Technology, Hindustan College of Engineering and Technology, Coimbatore. So this video is related to the course fundamentals of heat and mass transfer. Here we are going to see about the applications of heat and mass transfer uh, related to the types of evaporators. So there were so many types of evaporators. So evaporator is an application of heat and mass transfer where both the heat transfer and mass transfer will be taking place. So in this type of evaporators, we have batch type pan evaporator, natural circulation evaporator, rising film evaporator, falling film evaporator, rising or falling film evaporator, forced circulation evaporator, agitated thin film evaporators and centrithermal evaporators. We are going to see a few. Uh, here this is an open pan type uh, evaporator. So here the food samples will be placed, I uh, mean the juices or fruits will be placed inside this pan and here in this annular space uh, either steam or uh, usually steam or hot water, sometimes hot water may can also be used to as the heating medium. Here steam is used which indirectly heats the food pre uh, present inside this uh, vessel. Next is the natural circulation evaporator. Here in this natural circulation evaporator so food from uh, the material is passed inside these tubes and over the tube stream will be passed. So the heat transfer will be taking place between the food present inside the tubes and also the stream present outside the tubes. And here it is collected in this calendula section where the product is uh, collected out. If we need we can again uh, circulate the uh, uh, product to get more concentrated. Next is the horizontal tube evaporator. This horizontal tube as the name conveys the tube is placed horizontally where the material here the stream is passed inside the tubes and over the tubes the samples will be uh, passed and the heat transfer will be taken place. So the advantages were uh, it is cheap and it can be used for non-viscous materials and also this doesn't deposit scales on the evaporators but uh, one more disadvantage is that uh, poor liquid circulation. So when uh, the circulation is poor, it can't be used for liquid, liquid viscous food materials. Next is the vertical type short tube evaporator. Here liquid uh, short, uh, this tube is of uh, the diam the length of the tube is very short. And the here uh, the stream uh, is passed outside the tubes and the food material is passed inside these tubes. So here the feed enters, you can see in this figure, the feed enters here and then it moves over the tubes. And uh, the product will be flow, the stream will be flowing over the tube and finally we'll be getting the product out here. Next vertical type short tube evaporator. So here vertical type the same, the picture depicts the previous one. And next is the falling film evaporator. So here the uh, material will be falling from top to bottom. So here the feed enters at the top and it passes inside the n number of tubes present inside the uh, evaporating section and it collected at the bottom and then over the tubes the steam will be passed. You can see the steam will be passed at the sides of the evaporator and it will be distributed over the entire surface of the tubes and the condensate will be collected at the bottom. So the product coming down at the bottom will be entering to the calendria section where the vacuum and the product will be separated and the product will be collected at the bottom. So here you can see the real picture how the uh, juices or fruits or food materials which enters the tubes. So here this is the uh, place where the juice enters and you can see the holes of the tubes. So through these holes the uh, food material enters inside the juices, uh, inside the tubes. Next is the rising film evaporator. So here the feed material rises from bottom to the top. So that is why it is said as rising film evaporator. So the feed enters at this point and it rises inside the tubes from bottom to the top and it uh, after concentrating the uh, product is uh, transferred to the calendria section where we will be separating the vacuum and the product and the uh, concentrated product will be collected at the bottom. Here also the steam will be entering in the side of the evaporators and it, the steam is distributed over to the entire surface of the tubes. Next is the rising or falling film evaporator. So this is a combination type evaporator where we have both the mechanisms falling film and also the uh, rising film. So the uh, half part of the evaporator will be of falling film type and the remaining half will be of rising film type. So here the first half it is of uh, rising film type. 
so the feed material is entered at the bottom and it rises through the tubes and uh, it moves to the top and where it takes a turn and then it falls down in the remaining half of the evaporator so you can see the uh, product after raising to the top it again enters to the falling film section and again it is concentrated and it comes down after this it will be collected to the calandria and then where the vacuum and the product will be released. Next is the forced circulation evaporator. Here in these previous cases, the flow of material takes place naturally. But whereas in this forced circulation evaporator, the feed material will be uh, forced inside the evaporator with the help of the pumps. So here you can see a pump that is used to circulate the juices or uh, food materials inside the tubes. And then after concentration, it will be transferred to the calendar section and the product will be concentrated product will be collected. If in any case, if we, we need to again concentrate the material, it will be again circulated through the uh, evaporator once again and it will be concentrated till the desired concentration is reached. Next is the agitated thin film evaporator. So here thin film, this is the uh, arrangement of this agitated thin film evaporator. Here this is the agitator and uh, here this is the feed inlet and the material will enter inside here and it will be placed as a thin film over the surface of the agitator. And above this, the steam will be passed in the annular space and the product will be getting concentrated and will be collecting at the bottom. So this is an another type of uh, agitated film evaporator. This is an horizontal type agitated film evaporator where this is the rotor or agitator. It will be rotating at very high RPM. The feed enters at the top and uh, the feed material will be deposited as a thin film over the surface of this agitator. And here you can see the steam enters in this uh, indirect section. So in this space over the uh, agitator. And then uh, due to indir uh, indirect mechanism, the food material gets concentrated. So the uh, material will be, the concentrate will be collected at this place and steam condensate will be collected at this place. Next, coming to the methods of uh, feeding the multiple effect evaporator, there were different methods, forward feed and then so forward feed. So forward feed means the material the food material will be uh, a multiple effect evaporator means there will be so many evaporators will be there when we have more than two evaporators it is said as multiple effect evaporator so to increase this economy or to reduce the cost we will be using this multiple effect evaporator so here this numbers represent the number of evaporators first evaporator second evaporator third evaporator and fourth evaporator so here the feed food juices enters the first evaporator and uh, it, after the first evaporation, it will be moving to the uh, second evaporation. So this black dot line indicates the uh, juices. And after second, it will be moving to the third. And after third, it will be moving to the fourth. And finally, the concentrated thick liquid will be collected at the fourth evaporator. Whereas only at the first evaporator, the steam will be used. In the upcoming evaporators, only the vacuum uh, produced from the first evaporator will be used as the heating medium for all other evaporators. Next is the backward feed arrangement. Here the steam will be proceeding in the same manner as in the previous case that is from first to second, second to third and third to fourth whereas the feed will be entering at the back. So that is why it is said as backward feed arrangement. From the fourth and then it comes to the third and from the third it comes to the second evaporator and the uh, juices will be coming to the first evaporator and final concentrated product will be collected at the first evaporator. Next is the mixed feed arrangement. So mixed feed arrangement, it is a combination of backward feed and forward feed. Here the food ma feed material enters at the third evaporator and it moves forward to the fourth evaporator. And then after concentrating in the uh, fourth evaporator, it moves backward to the second evaporator. And in the second evaporator, it goes to the first evaporator and uh, the final product will be collected in the first evaporator. Whereas uh, steam will be in the same way in the, as in the previous cases. Next is the parallel feed evaporator. Here in this parallel feed evaporator, this type of evaporator will be used in sugar industries where the feed will be entering in the first evaporator and it will be collected in the same evaporator itself. 
then again the second fresh feed will be entering in the second year operator and it will be collected similarly for third and fourth but uh, here in this case the stream only will be taken forward to all the evaporators single effect evaporator that only when we have one only one evaporator it is known as single effect evaporator here it is uh, simple to use but it has a uh, ineffective operation so to evaporate 1 kg of water we need 1 to 1.3 kg of stream multiple effect evaporator uh, we uh, in the for using 1 kg of stream it is uh, for to ev evaporate 1 kg of water we require around 0.7 to 0.8 kg of stream only so this is double effect evaporator where we have two evaporators the working mechanism is